Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. As a reminder, all participants are muted. Once the video begins, confirm that your volume is up and the video is not muted. The presentation can be enlarged by clicking on the <clears throat> video link button up at the top of your screen. Just a reminder that if you do hear the um, the sound twice, it means that the two windows have opened and you need to close the sound on one of the windows. Uh, the Q&A session will be towards the end of the presentation via the podium chat function on your screen. Um, a button will become live and you'll be able to hit join the podium. We will activate this again towards the end of the meeting. Your virtual podium comment will be entered into the official project record. It may be read aloud or displayed on screen and will be responded to either live or post event by the project team. And we will also look to pull a good amount of the questions into a kind of Q&A sheet to post on the website post event. So welcome to the Eastside Coastal Resiliency MWBE Section 3 Spring Information Session virtual meeting today, April 29th, 2021. We're so happy that you're all available to join us today and we have a great presentation to share with you. So the agenda for today, we'll have some welcoming remarks. We'll give an overview of Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. We have DDC here with us who will speak about the Office of Diversity and Industry Relations. We'll talk about MWBE and Section 3 contracting opportunities, Section 3 and local hiring registration partners, ESTER website resources, and then as previously mentioned, we'll have a question and answer session. Uh, just a reminder for those who are um, with us today, there will be subsequent meetings to this one. So if you speak to folks and they weren't able to attend, uh, the, this is being recorded um, and will be available uh, through a link on the website. And we will have future events similar to this. So I'd like to take a moment to welcome our council members representatives. Uh, for Councilwoman Carlina Rivera's office, we have Pedro Carrillo on the phone. Pedro? Hi, everybody. Thank you for, for having us today. And uh, thank you to DDC and all the agencies for putting this together. Um, Councilwoman Rivera is um, very eager for, or was eager for these sessions to kick off. Um, we believe that uh, opportunities for Section 3 entities, MWBEs, uh, should be made available uh, for big city projects like these, but in particular uh, for projects, um, resiliency projects like ESCR and others that are going to protect our communities and our open space for generations to come. Um, I'm sure all of you remember the effects of Superstorm Sandy on uh, the east side of Manhattan and uh, also the other boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, and Staten Island. And uh, we want to make sure that everything that we're doing in order to protect our neighborhoods has equity in mind and that we're providing opportunities, not just for contracting uh, for MWBs and Section 3 businesses, but also for jobs for people in the areas that were most affected by the storm and by climate change going forward. So again, uh, thank you very much for this session and we hope that all of you will sign up for whatever opportunities are made available uh, through this session today. Hey Joe, thank you so much for being present today. Um, and those words were, were really great and they really speak to, to the project and, and the aim of these sessions and the sessions that we'll hold moving forward. 
Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, a representative from council member Keith Powers office was unable to attend. They had to cancel at the last minute. However, we hope that they will be able to attend uh, one of the future sessions that that we will have. So a little bit about our presenters today. Um, on the phone, we have Wayne Lambert, who is DDC's Chief Diversity Officer. Uh, prior to joining DDC, Mr. Lambert was Deputy Director of Programs at the New York City Mayor's Office of Minority and Women-Owned Business Enterprises, where he worked closely with the Senior Advisor to the Mayor to develop strategic plans, policies, and programs for related diversity and inclusion programs. He began his career in the city government in the New York City Department of Small Business Services, where he served in various positions. We also have with us today Trang Bui, the owner of Bui Studios, a minority woman-owned business based in the Lower East Side with over 15 years of public sector project experience. Uh, Trang is a former DDC chief of staff and executive at the Mayor's Public Design Commission and has been involved in disaster recovery and resiliency programs totaling over $6 billion, ranging from the 9-11 World Trade Center recovery and Hurricane Katrina to the recent COVID-19 responses across New York. Trang is a subconsultant for the HNTB Lero uh, JV team, who is the program manager, construction manager for the project. Um, I am Desiree Gazzo, uh, part of the HNTB Lero team. I lead the community engagement um, a program for the ESCR project. And if you have been to our community board meetings or our community advisory group meetings, um, I'm often leading the presentations there. So it's great to, um, to be here with you. I'm also joined by Leah Wenner, um, also part of the HNTB Lero JV team, um, working on the community engagement outreach. So I know many are aware of the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project, but for those who are not, um, the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project is a coastal protection initiative jointly funded by the City of New York and the federal government aimed at reducing flood risk due to coastal storms and sea level rise on Manhattan's east side. Um, the project integrates flood protection into the community fabric, improving waterfront, open spaces, and access. Um, as Pedro said, it's, you know, it's a very much needed um, after the superstorms that the neighborhood has experienced. Um, it's been under design for several years uh, and construction began on project area two um, in fall of 2020 uh, and is scheduled to continue through 2025. The project team is led by the New York City Department of Design and Construction, the Mayor's Office of Resiliency, and the Department of Parks and Recreation. Other agency partners include the DOT, DEP, City Planning, and Economic Development Corporation. And we've been working very closely with all of our partners throughout the design and now through the construction. So the map on the screen now, um, just looks at the different contracts that are in the, the program. Um, so project area two is where the work has already begun. And project area two encompasses work between East 15th Street and East 25th Street. And that includes after Levy Playground, Stuyvesant Cove Park, Murphy Brothers Playground, and local streets in the area. So that construction contract is currently underway. The two other contracts on the screen are project area one, and parallel conveyance. They are still under <clears throat> procurement or for PC, um, will be released for procurement shortly. Um, project area one is concentrated in Manhattan's Lower East Side between Montgomery Street and East 15th Street and includes East River Park. Um, and the parallel conveyance contract uh, is inland drainage infrastructure improvements within the overall ESCO project footprint. So that spans um, <clears throat> those are the areas in red that spans the full length of the, of the project area. So I'm going to pass 
the microphone over to Wayne. Wayne, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, please um, continue to let us know about the uh, ODIR department at the at DDC. Hi there, good morning. Thank you, Desiree, uh, and thank you, Tran, um, and the entire team um, for putting this session together here today. Um, as mentioned, my name is Wayne Lambert. I'm the Chief Diversity and Industry Relations Officer here at the Department of Design and Construction. Uh, I'm here by way of the Mayor, Mayor de Blasio, and also by Commissioner Jamie Torres Springer. And of course, uh, you know, as the Chief Diversity Officer here, our goal and our intention is to ensure that there are opportunities for minority and women-owned businesses. Uh, but we also look to, you know, um, help ensure that there are goals, the compliance. There's a lot of caveats to the Office of Diversity and in, in Industry Relations. Uh, again, uh, you know, we design and implement policies by way of the mayor's office. Um, obviously, we operate under the city's local law one MWBE program, uh, and we help to ensure that there are uh, compliance goals and the requirements of the program are carried out um, through, through internal means processes and so on. So again, we design and implement policies to promote the participation of minority and women-owned businesses, right? That's our primary intention. Um, as noted again, we, we establish MWBE participation goals on all our contracts that are eligible for the program. And by way of executive orders and other avenues, we ensure that you know we push the envelope when it comes to opportunities for MWBEs. Again, trying to you know uh, make sure that no stone is unturned. Um, we ensure that there are procedures here internally, uh, working with our agency our units and external agency partners as well um, to ensure that you know we get the word out there about the opportunities that are available for MWBEs. Uh, we promote equitable and competitive business uh, environment, again, by way of interaction with the different business units, by attending sessions like these here and by uh, uh, conducting our own sessions and outreach to MWBEs, again, ensuring that the agency's procurement reflects the diversity of New York City. Again, that uh, and by pushing the envelope, we do that not only by setting goals, but we use our data and use the numbers. Um, this information is public, so you can see the city's utilization and also every agency's utilization. So we utilize that to help set goals on our project. We utilize that to help identify where we are. We have the least amount of um, the, uh, the lowest uh, utilization and then try to set goals um, accordingly with those, uh, with assuming uh, uh, with the uh, understanding that there's availability of MABEs to do the work. Um, we also provide comprehensive assistance and guidance um, uh, through various contracting and program units. Uh, again, that assistance might be one on one. It might be in a group setting. Um, you know, we hold forums recently. Some of you may have attended DDC design build forum series, a Q and A session where we targeted and did outreach uh, specifically to MABEs. Um, again, to ensure that with this new, uh, with some of the new programs like design build, uh, MABEs are aware of the caveats involved there and can, you know, bid on these projects, whether it's prime or subcontracts, uh, subcontractors, excuse me. So, you know, we, we, we sort of run the gambit here uh, when we, again, try to work with MABEs, whether it be assistance, whether it be goal setting, whether it be working program units, um, even in terms of our training, we train staff, we train MABEs, we partner with the Mayor's Office of Contract Services, the Mayor's Office of MWBEs, and the Department of Small Business Services to ensure that MWBEs are connected to the right opportunities and services. Uh, many of the services offered, you know, may come not directly from DDC, but through our partner agencies like Small Business Services. So we are partners in crime um, in doing this work, and uh, we work together to ensure that opportunities are there for MWBEs. Uh, again, we also serve as the agency's primary point of contact when it comes to anything MDBE related. Um, I have a great team. I have some members on I was, uh, from the team on the line as well, um, a, a strong team uh, who ensures that you know, we carry out the goals of the program. Um, part of our, uh, the Office of Diversity and Industry Relations includes the Business Development Unit, also known as the BDU Unit, um, who also helps to conduct uh, extensive outreach, um, uh, outreach campaigns, um, again, one-on-ones, all types of sessions, and folks should reach out to our office um, to share information, share your capability statement, uh, you know, reach out to us because we are looking to do more and more sessions as we meet with MWBEs. Um, something else that we would like to um, promote 
if you will, is our, our mentoring program. Uh, some of you may know that the city got the authority to create a mentoring program through DDC, similar to the school construction authorities mentoring program and the MTA's mentoring program. And the purpose there is to create another avenue for MDABs to grow and build capacity. Again, you know, we look at this, we have short term approaches, but we're also thinking about this in the long term. How can we address disparities in the long term? Get rid of these disparities that have taken decades to build, right? It's, it's, so it might take time to get rid of them. So we want to make sure that we have programs in place like the mentoring program, which we anticipate launching in uh, by the end of this year. So you should look out for that. We will be doing heavy promotion there and outreach, um, sharing information, flyers, and so on uh, for, again, for mentorship opportunities uh, as we look to develop and grow this program. Also, we have the ability to create uh, MDB only PQLs, so upper qualified list. So that's something that we're pushing more and more. Again, some of the avenues you, uh, where we try to find more uh, areas of opportunity for MDBEs and using our discretionary. Uh, our discretion um, and uh, not discretionary in our discretionary threshold um, to identify opportunities for MDBEs. Right now, the city has uh, discretionary spend up to $500,000 um, for particular con uh, contracts and there are caveats there. But again, we try to identify those opportunities as much as possible and share them with MDBEs, right? Um, something that's not noted here, but I always want to make sure that uh, the MDBEs are aware and contractors are aware, right? Even if you're not an MWBE, Right, you want to make sure that you're registered in the city's passport and pay information portal systems. Again, you want to make sure that if you're a business, whether you're MDB or not, that you're registered in the city's passport and uh, pay information portal system. And we can share links to those uh, uh, portals uh, after this session. But it's important that if you want to do business with the city, you register in those databases. It's as simple as that. Uh, and we can, again, share that information with you. Um, but again, you know, the intention with our unit is to maximize opportunities. Um, we want to hear from you. So again, we're happy to be here and we'll, uh, we uh, hope to continue working with all of you and look forward to working with many of you in the future on this opportunity and others here at DDC. Thank you, Desiree. Thank you, Wayne. And now we'll have our MWBE Section 3 sub consultant, Chang Bui, who will go over our local hiring goals and, and a few other things, parts of the program. Chang? Thanks, Desiree. Um, so just following up on what Wayne spoke about and also what um, Pedro was mentioning, the the, there are four different um, goals under the ESCOR program strictly aimed at providing opportunities to MWB firms, um, Section 3 firms, and also targeting local hiring. So the first one, the, M, the MWBE um, commitment by, by this team is set at the task order level. And again, that depends on the, the type of work under the task order, the market availability of um, qualified MWB firms to, to perform the work. So right now, um, today, what we're, we're speaking to you about is, is the PM side of um, the contracts and that, that involves HNTB lure team. The current goal is 31% and the team came in with a very robust um, group of MWB firms already and also section three firms. The other um, hiring opportunities that, that are part of this program is the Sandy recovering, um, uh, recovery hiring goal. Again, this is a resiliency project and we want to encourage contractors and subcontractors to hire 20% Sandy impacted residents in the area. And then Hire NYC is another program that, that, that's in alliance with city agencies with, and job seekers and employers to connect construction related jobs. Again, um, connecting to, to the local area and also for low income individuals. Now, the ESCO program is also funded by federal monies to the Department of Housing and um, Urban Development, HUD. So their Section 3 program applies here. And the intent of that program is to provide job training, employment, and contracting opportunities to low or very low income individuals who are you know, involved, whose, whose neighborhoods are, are impacted and, and is getting federal dollars to 
for neighborhood improvement. So the numerical goals here is 30% of new hires resulting from the project should be um, targeted to Section 3 individuals. 10% of construction contracts should, should be um, prioritized for Section 3 businesses, and then 3% of non-construction contracts are also um, given priority to, to Section 3 business entities. A little bit more about what um, the definition of Section 3 is um, on an individual basis, it's it's a gen, gender neutral criteria and strictly based on on income. So if you're an individual um, earning less than the the cap that's um, that changes every year according to HUD standards, the 2020 um, period uh, reporting period had it around 63,000. You are considered a a Section 3 individual and and would be given preference if if you register on some of our workforce development programs. Another way to, um, to determine eligibility as a Section 3 individual is also if you live in, in public housing in the New York City area, and then also um, a combined household income also uh, meeting the cap that's set forth by, by HUD um, to consider being a Section 3 individual. On the, on the business entity side, if you meet one of the three criteria listed here, um, you can self certify it as a section three business concern. And that process, you could do it through the New York City Housing Authority, which has a self certification process that's relatively simple. It, it's um, and once you're once you reach out to them, you could just get on their list and they publish a, a list that um, gets updated periodically. And then you're on you're on the list for for contracting opportunities with NYCHA or other businesses who, who have federal funded um, projects and are looking for Section 3 businesses. Um, same thing with the HUD um, Section 3 registry, self-certification, and that has a, a national reach, and you could search by, by region and um, by business names that way. So if you're a, a business and you haven't heard about Section 3 before, I encourage you to take a look at your workforce because if if your ma the majority of your company is owned by Section Three individuals, or if you regularly um, hire and and your staff is thirty percent or more um, that's comprised of Section Three individuals, you you would qualify. And and then if you're a business who who frequently subcontract uh, twenty percent of your work to Section Three businesses, you would also be eligible there. So for the ESCR program, we've identified three major areas where there are um, opportunities for both hiring and for subcontracting. So as I mentioned, the program management team is HNTB Lero, and that's what we're focused on today. For the general contracting side, those are separate con contracts with construction contractors, and we'll come back to you um, later on and with um, later events. That's that's going to be just focused on the contractors as they come aboard um, on this project. For the community inclusion and outreach, as the project progresses and we have more of a presence in, in the area and start setting up offices and, and have, have needs to sustain our operations, we will look to the local businesses and population to help us staff and also provide services. So some of the positions that we know we, we will be posting in, in the very near future our field and support staff on, on this project, and that includes inspectors, safety officers, administrative support, as well as supplies and vendor services and equipment purchases. For today's um, presentation, we're going to focus on, on two of our local recruitment partners, Workforce One and also the New York City Housing Authority's Office of Resident Economic Empowerment and Sustainability, or RESE. So they have infrastructure in place already where individuals could register to access their services, and we rely on them as a recruiting resource to funnel candidates to us who've already been pre-screened as local individuals or Section 3 individuals, and also their skill sets have been pre-screened to match up with what our, our hiring needs would be. Other partners we've already been working with or will be down, down the line on this program would be the Henry Street Settlement um, that, that has local um, outreach and job course development and training resources, 
and they're also part of the Lower East Side Employment Network. And then for the ESCO project, there's also been a community advisor group that's been formed. And again, it's made up of, of some of the partners in the Lower East Side Employment Network, but other community um, advocates and local resources. So we'll look to all of those partners to help us um, with outreach and recruitment. And of course, through the council members um, as well and our local community board partners. So some of the opportunities for MWB in session three that were part of the original HNTV Lero team is here. So th these are services that will, will be coming online um, as, as each segment of the construction that Desiree presented come online and get more active. And as we, we determine the hiring needs and any additional subcontracting needs, it'll be posted on our website under the careers and procurement section. And we'll have a little bit more about that for you later. On the construction services side, again, the bulk of the hiring for the labor force is there with the union, and we would actually come back to you on a separate occasion to go through the details of that. So upcoming immediate services that we know we will need in, in the next few months are printing services for as construction um, is going up. There, there are some um, pieces there that we will need. And then as our project and field offices are, are being set up, there will be a need to set up corporate accounts and we would look to get um, all of the services where we can from local vendors and also from the MWBE um, directories, both from the city or the state. And then if there are any specialty services that are not there, we sometimes go to other agencies um, listings as well. And then DDC is constantly growing their list, um, as, as Wayne said, with people sending in their quals and also um, they could help us um, supplement uh, our, our searches from, from the existing database with, with new information that's coming in. So the, the next few slides will be um, video tutorials on how individuals can register with the individual um, workforce development agencies that we will be recruiting from. What we wanted to do was to make it easy for individuals who are looking for jobs to just go to one place. So we've, we've put all of these links on the ESCO website. So if you start here from this, from our website here, It'll take you from our website, which starts with the overview, click on the contact tab, and then work with us. And again, this is where we post all of our information for other resources. And when you scroll down, click on local employment opportunities. And here we're looking for NYCHA RES program and click on section three employment registration takes you to the NYCHA page with all of the information about their program, including job postings and some background information. But to participate, you do need to attend an information session. And that's found here. And you could click on that link because everything is being done virtually right now. You could click on whatever date works for your schedule for the information session. And it takes you to the registration page where you could do it um, by phone or create an account on their self-service portal. So if you click on the self-service link, it'll take you there. If you're already, if you're already a user, you could log in with your existing information. If you're a new user, you need to register. And here you have the option of choosing what type of user you'll be. So as an individual, you're clicking on applicant, tenant, or member. And then here you'll need to input some information for, for contact and follow up. And social security number is asked for, but if you don't have one, there's a box to check off now. Once you're done, hit submit and you're in the system. If you have any problems registering, there is a RES hotline for you to call. Next, we'll do the same thing for Workforce One. 
and that's um, managed through the Department of Small Business Services. So again, you go to the ESPR website. And to use the services for Workforce One, you do need to meet these three criteria. So again, you're on the ESCO website, contact, work with us link, scroll to the bottom for local employment opportunities, and this time click on Workforce One. This takes you to the SBS website, and you want to click on careers, and then explore job openings. Just like NYCHA, you do need to register before you connect, so this gets you to the registration page. Sign in with your existing account or create a new one. Provide an email address. And then also set up a password and create account. Once you're ready, you could go back to the explore job openings tab. And now you could connect with the workforce 1 center. And there are a lot of resources here to, for you to explore job openings, prepare for interviews and other um, resources. Once you click on this, it's a an intake form, very, very short, just to learn a bit more about yourself, your areas of interest. It asks for your zip code, so we'll know how to connect you to your local opportunities, and then submit. So once you're done, Workforce One will get in touch with you, and, um, and we'll move on from there. So just to recap some of the resources we We've mentioned the Eastside Coastal Resiliency website is there, and and we will update all all opportunities that, as they come up, or if there are any other resources. Just like Wayne said about um, how to work with um, how to register with the passport system, we'll we'll post them there. I believe they might it might already be up there. Um, the Reese Hotline for for NYCHA is also listed here. For you since that was in the video and then um, another resource from the department of small business services is their platform called career discovery nyc and the website is listed here and again it's a no-cost access to training to learn about new careers or if you're you have a career you're interested in but you wanted to know more about it in terms of um, the, the the salary expectations or training involved it's a great resource to go to and with that, I'll turn it over to Leah, who will go over some more resources on the web, ESCO website. Thanks, Chang. Yeah, um, just going to reiterate what Chang just shared. Um, our Work With Us page on the ESCO website is where you can find all of this information, um, all the links that Chang just shared. The section at the top under careers and procurement um, is where we will be posting all open positions, um, particularly with our HNTB Lear uh, PMCM team. Um, that is kind of a watch the space section. Um, as Chang mentioned, we will have a couple positions up very shortly, including a contracting opportunity for print services. Um, and then a safety officer and two inspector uh, positions. Those will be posted shortly, so do check back um, in the, the coming days. Um, and then also in this section, once those positions are posted, we will have a link to the uh, job portal. This is where you'll be able to apply for um, again, any of those positions, submit resumes or qualifications for, uh, for the particular position you're looking for. All open positions will be posted here, and there will be um, a way to upload, again, your qualifications. So uh, this is kind of an easy way to share your information with us, and our team will get back to you and, and connect you to the right people. And then to reiterate what Desiree said at the beginning of the presentation, we will be holding these events quarterly. Our next session will be in July. 
and we will be sharing any updates to our hiring um, and, and opportunities at that point. If there's updates to kind of the contractor side as well, um, we will be sharing it then. So we encourage you to check back and, and join us again at future events. Um, also, this session is being recorded. It will be posted. We'll send out a link um, to all participants following the presentation. So if you know anyone who wasn't able to attend, um, you can encourage them to, to view the session later. On our contact page, you can also submit any questions or comments um, and sign up for project updates to uh, understand how the project is um, is moving along and get any of that information. And that is the end of our presentation this morning. Um, thank you again to everyone who is in the session. Um, the podium is now open for comments. And so uh, we do encourage you to ask questions now, or if you have questions later, again, you can go back to that. Um, inquiry, uh, inquiry page we just shared. So feel free to send any comments now or, or later. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Chang, Pedro, and Wayne. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, that was a great presentation. And um, again, as Leah mentioned, um, this was a recorded event, so it will be available for anyone who did not, who was unable to make it. And we will stay on for a little bit longer uh, to see if any questions come through the podium. So we received one um, question from Lynn uh, for Section 3 business entities, which is the best vehicle to identify Section 3 individuals? Trang, do you want to take that? Sure. So one of the best resources is for um, if you're an employer looking to hire is through the NYCHA RES program. The, um, because not only um, if you're looking for a job, you could register, but if you go, if you saw on the um, tutorial, there there is a user type to register with NYCHA. So if you're um, an employer, you could select that option. And then you could also reach out to them directly by the number to let them know um, what hiring opportunities you have. That's what we're we're planning to do. Thanks again, and I know that um, there's probably a little bit of a delay with, with typing questions, so we will, you know, allow for some more time if anyone um, has questions that, and wants to ask them now. And just, uh, again, if, if you think of questions later or want to get back to us um, after you've digested this information or have questions about any of these portals, um, you can visit our website, go to the contact page, and and submit your questions then, and we will get back to you.
give our attendees just one or two more minutes and then we'll close, close the event. And while we're waiting, just a reminder, you know, Leah said that, that we will have more of these uh, sessions. Uh, we also know that there's a large union component to this project. So some of the future sessions will focus on, um, on the union component and union outreach. Um, so, you know, as this is a very complex project, uh, some of the information sessions will be um, kind of repeat of information for those who didn't make it and those who have questions, but then we will look to have um, sessions which speak to different aspects of the Section 3 MWBE local hiring. Um, so please, again, you know, if you if you do attend, if you did attend this event, um, please know that the other events will be slightly different, and we will post the focus for those when we send out the invitations. Um, we also are planning to have in-person events in the upcoming year, um, smaller within your community. So if you if you would like us to, um, you know, partner with you or, you know, there are definitely opportunities on a smaller scale as well. So again, use that inquiry tool and, and reach out to us. And I think it looks like we have another question from Frank. Um, thank you for the presentation. You're, you're greatly welcome. Um, Trang, did you want to repeat the percentage of the new hires and priorities? I don't know if you want to flip back to that slide um, as well. Thanks. Sure. The um, the numerical goals for for section three is that the question? Yes, I believe so. The question is uh, the percentages of new hires and priorities. So I believe that's for section three. Yes. Yeah. Um. So thirty percent of new hires um, would would be. Um, targeted for Section 3 individuals, 10% of construction contracts, and 3% of non-construction contracts for Section 3 business entities. Great, thank you, Chang. And then, you know, Frank, we will have the presentation available um, if you need to flip back to, to that part of the, uh, of the presentation as well. So again, we'll take any, any other questions, otherwise we'll close in just a minute. Okay, great. So I think we're going to take this time to close. We're, we're just before time here, so we'll give everyone back a little bit uh, of their morning. Uh, again, we thank you all for being, being with us today. We look forward to having you on future sessions. Uh, please reach out. Again, did you have any questions or comments or if there's any way that we could help you? Um, and we look forward to, you know, being out in the community in person in the future this year. So please come out and see us. There's, oh, there's one more question. Hold on, there's a follow-up. Um, additionally, are there training resources that would be made available in advance of future job opportunities in PM, GC, community outreach, and other potential positions? Thinking years down the road with ESCR and what job opportunities will arise and how we could prep our residents in the Lower East Side area. Thank you. Chen, do you wanna take that? Sure. Um, yes, we are reviewing um, upcoming hiring needs and uh, what the qualifications and training are required. And uh, we are also talking to 
to NYCHA and Small Business Services um, to also explore pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship programs. And again, once, once that's um, further developed, um, we will come back to you with more details on that because that, that would directly relate to the labor force that, that are on the trade side, um, which involves the unions. All right, great. So I think we're going to um, close the session now. And if, again, if there are any future um, questions or comments, please check back. Again, we are working with the community board and the community advisory group um, on helping people understand the MWBE and Section 3 process. Um, you know, so please attend any of those meetings um, as well as future meetings for this. Um, we thank you very, very much for being here and again, look forward to working with you all in the future. Have a great day.